before uh, we uh, proceed, we will ask the Lord to bless us this morning. Heavenly Father, this morning we come to you seeking your blessings. Lord, we pray that you will anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you will keep us focused until we finish this service and help us to see in your eternal kingdom. Lord, we pray for all the participants across the world who are participating in this worship this morning. Lord, we pray that you bless them, bless them abundantly, that you will take a good care of them. Lord, as we continue, we pray that you will continue to bless us and uphold me. Be with me, strengthen me. For these few mercies we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I would like to read from Luke chapter 23, verse 27 and 28. It says, And there followed him a great multitude of people, and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, cry not for me, but cry for yourself and for your children. Crying for children is quite common, especially when they fall sick, when they are not in the fold, when they are outgrown to your uh, discipline, we parents, we usually cry. But the cry that Jesus mentioned here is a different type of cry that every parent has to participate in it. It was that night when Jesus was caught to be crucified. The majority of the people were, uh, you know, shouting, saying, crucify him, crucify him. The Bible says that in one portion of that crowd, there stood some ladies lamenting for Jesus. They were crying, looking at Jesus' innocence. They saw the glow, uh, the glowness of his innocency, though he was carrying the cross. And there were people who were just uh, stopping them crying, saying that, why do you want to cry for this wicked man? And even the daughters of Jerusalem, were not bothered they continued crying weeping for Jesus and Jesus turned back and said to them "O oh, daughters of Jerusalem you don't cry for me you cry for yourself and for your children this morning my dear church members across the world and many people who are listening from many parts of the world crying for children is the responsibility of every parent this morning, especially, I would entrust the mothers to take over the job of crying for your children. Luke chapter 23, verse 28, Jesus specifically tells the women of Jerusalem, saying that Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, cry not for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. Don't cry for me. Don't cry for Jesus. Don't cry for God. Don't cry for the Holy Spirit, but cry for yourself and for your children. Because God has entrusted the children unto our fold. And it is our responsibility to mend them, train them, and see that they are in heaven with us. Jesus, looking at the impending trouble that would happen shortly, tell the daughters of Jerusalem, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, do not cry for me. Cry for you and yourself. Cry for your children. Cry for your family. And I can see Jerusalem being destroyed. I can see you running up and down to, for, uh, for help. I can see people who have faith getting shattered because they believe in Jesus. And Jesus is telling them, O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but you cry for you and for your children. I bring your attention to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. And there is a beautiful small story of a gospel worker's family, and especially a mother going to a prophet seeking for help. And you are well versed with the story, so I don't get into the story and try, I'm trying to explain the story and waste my time. But I'm going to draw some uh, lessons that we in our time require to do the same manner as this woman of faith has done. Second Kings chapter 
4 verse 1 says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, The servant my husband is dead, and thou knowest thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors is come to take unto him my two children to be born men. Children are precious. We parents would give anything for our children. And Jesus once told the disciples, you parents, if your children ask for bread, you would give uh, better things. And you will never give serpents or snakes. So also us as parents, we would give the best thing possible for our children. And there is a mother who saw the debtors around her house coming to cast them and make them slaves. This mother of faith, wife of a gospel worker or a so-called pastor, going to the prophet and asking for help. I have three or four points maybe. The first point I would, I would stress this morning is when she had a problem, she went to God, the prophet. When she had a problem, she directly went to the uh, prophet of God or I should say to God himself. She did not wait for worldly advice. She did not look for rich people to help her. She should not, I mean, she never uh, waited that somebody would empathize her and give her the money that she requires. She understood that only God can help her in this time of necessity. And she rushed to the prophet and said, O oh, prophet of uh, God, you know your servant, my husband, my children's father, who was a sincere man who, who feared the Lord with all his heart, and he was very sincere in his work. This happened to many sincere workers of the gospel. People who are sincere forget about their family, who do their do the God's work very honestly. They sometimes end up in trouble because the world will see that they have no uh, inheritance in this world. But they, they, they may not know that their inheritance is in the kingdom where it will never perish. So also this prophet of God or the servant of God who did not say anything for his family. Now the husband, the prophet is dead and the wife is running to the prophet of God and saying that your servant has given us only debt and nothing else. Of course we have lived a peaceful life but now we have debt and two sons. I don't know what to be done and now you are here to help me and you, have, you ought to help me. My dear church members, this morning, do we have a problem that uh, only God can save? Do we have a problem that only you think God will help us? Do we have a problem that you cannot tell anyone? Be it, be it your father, mother, your spouse, or your church member, or church pastor, for that matter, anyone in this world, do you think that you have a problem similar to this woman of the Bible? She did not have a second thought. She directly went to the prophet of God and said, I have a problem and you are the man to solve it. And the prophet of God acted on it. My dear church members this morning, when we have problems, when we have troubles, when we have no one to help, it is our duty and it is our time to rush to God. Go directly to God. Fall at his feet and say that I have no, I have none to help but you and you alone. You are my shield and you are my refuge and you are my shelter. I come to you in refuge. Be it sickness, be it health issues, be it financial, socio-economical, be it educational problem, be it your own personal family problems, be it your children's problem, you call it anything. When you have a problem that you know that unless God intervene, it cannot be solved. It is advisable that you directly go to God and tell that I have a problem. Unless you solve it, it will never be solved. 
you will have so many advisors. You will have so many people in time of plenteous. But in, but in time of trouble, God is our refuge. Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. When we are in trouble, when we have a problem, when we have nobody to help, it is God who would always willing to help us. Remember that this woman of the Bible, she directly went to God and fell at his feet and said, you have to help me Lord, or God. This morning, do you think that you have a similar problem? Because of this COVID-19, uh, there are so many who lost employment, who lost contact with the family members. There are so many who lost uh, their uh, loved one's life. There are so many who lost their education system. There are so many who lost and shattered their plans. Do you think that humanly is, it is recoverable? Or you think it is better to fall at God's feet and say, Lord, it is your time to work for me. The second point that I would stress this morning is, cry before God and not before man. Cry before God and not before man. She did not look for peripheral help. She did not look for any man to help her. And she directly went to the prophet and said, Oh Lord, I have a problem. There are secrets in life. There are difficult conditions in life. There are problems that we cannot share with our own family members. But these are such things that we can openly tell to God that I have a problem. And this woman of the Bible, she went to the Lord, the servant of the Lord, and said, I have a problem. And she cried before the prophet. This morning, I would request each of you to keep, a, keep it a point that you will cry for your children. Jesus said, Oh, daughters of Jerusalem, you don't have to cry for me. You don't need to cry for me. You cry for yourself and for your children because impending destruction is coming. You have to cry for your family members. You have to especially cry for your children because you know not what is happening there. We may think that our children are very precious and they are very obedient and they are very God-fearing and uh, you think that they are very open and social and they tell everything that they do in a day's time. That's not so. We don't know where they are going. We don't know where, what they are doing. We don't know what struggles they are undergoing. And we don't know who is there out to snatch them and put them in the bondage. We still don't know what, what are the struggles they are undergoing in their own lives. Maybe a small child, an adolescent or a youth or uh, you call it your children. Whether they are grandparents or still parents or unmarried bachelors, spinsters. There are a lot of troubles and struggles they undergo as parents. Whether you are grandparents or just parents. Pray for your children. Pray for your children and cry for them. Cry. Unless you cry for your children, God will not hear your prayer. That is what Jesus said. You don't cry for me. You cry for yourself and for your children. This morning, my dear church members, when was the last time that you cried and prayed for your child? When was the last time that you had an encounter with the Lord asking for protection over your child. Can you remember the date or its, or its past years? It is high time that we go to the Lord and cry for our children because the time is not so favorable for us. I was married in 2000 
And for the next three years, I never had children. And all, all those who know the Indian condition and all those who are from India would uh, imagine with me, from the day next, people will ask the women who are married, is there any good news? After a month, they will look at your, your, your belly. After a year, they will directly ask you, what, do you have a problem? And if you don't have a child for, last, from, uh, for two, three years, then they will say, ah, this, this couple, this couple, they have, they have some problem, but they, 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 they don't have children. And we also underwent the similar kind of uh, you know, problems. And we were praying, and we were praying, and we were expecting our first child anytime. But, you know, it was not happening. And we went to, went to see a doctor. We were in Otapalam uh, Hospital and we went to see a doctor. And it was our second uh, year after the marriage. And lo and behold, the doctor said, you come to see us after fifth year of your marriage. If you still don't have children, then we will see what we can do. And then we, th we thought it is better to trust again in God and seek his blessings and we prayed. And the third year, we got our first son. Then we started praying for our son's growth. Then when he was mature enough to be educated, we, pr we started praying for the best education. Now he is a youth. Now we are praying that he will, you know, God will uh, mold his character, that he will be fit enough to be called God's son and he will be, uh, he will be in God's kingdom. That is our prayer. And all those who have elderly children, all those, all those children who are not married, are you praying to the Lord? All those children who are married and have children, if you are grandparents, are you still praying for your children? And Jesus, looking at the weeping women of Jerusalem, said, Oh, women of Jerusalem, you don't cry for me, you cry for yourself and for your children. At any age, as parents, it is our responsibility to cry for our children. Psalms 50 words 15 says, call, up more, call upon me in the days of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. When you are in trouble, you call me. When you have a problem, you call me. I will see that you are delivered. That is what God says. I have a praying mother. She is close to 65. I was born also after three years of my parents' marriage. So I was so precious to them because after three years, I was born. Those days, you know, uh, family planning after marriage was not known to our parents. These days, you know, after marriage also, people will think whether we should have children or not. And we should have also, they'll think, okay, we'll have after five years. Uh, those days, it was not so. Immediately after marriage, the first thing they should do is try for the children. And the next year, if they don't have children, people will call their bad. And my parents also did not have children. After three years, I was born. And the story is told that on the seventh day after my birth, I was in my father's hand. And he was patting me and he was playing with me. And suddenly I stopped breathing. And my body became pain. And body stiffened. And my father yelled, my mother, come here, something is happening. And my mother was washing clothes. She came running, took me in her hand, went to the prayer room and she started crying to the Lord. And said, Oh Lord, if you give me, give me back the life of my son, I promise that I will see that he is a gospel worker or a pastor. I never knew this promise that my mother made until I finished my college. But those were the days that parents used to pray for children. And during my studies, Whenever I come home, I would hear a whisper. I would hear 
the sound of a small cry, a, a weeping sound I used to hear from my house. And later I understand that it was my mother crying for her children. Every day when I come home, suddenly when I open the door, I see her kneeling down in the pitch dark and just crying and asking the Lord to bless her children. This morning, let me ask you, my dear friends who are watching me, listening me, hearing me. When was the last time you cried and prayed for your children to the Lord? Do you spend your personal time crying for your children? Do you take time on a regular basis, at least when they are in trouble, do you take time to pray and cry to the Lord and say, Lord, save my child? When you don't have time to go to the Lord and cry for your children, I assure you, I assure you that everyone who does not have time to cry for their children before the Lord will cry in the public for their children. Psalmist 127 verse 3 to 5 says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be put to shame when they speak with their enemies in the gate. If you now cry for your children, for their development, therefore character modification, molding, then when they are old and when they stand their own, you don't have to cry in the public because of them. And they will never, never and ever will put you in shame. That is what the Bible says. This morning as you listen to the word of God, the women of the Bible, the prophet's wife, went to the Lord and said, Lord, I have a problem. I have a problem. And I'm, I'm crying before you. And I have no one to help me. And it is you that who are going to help me. And the Lord helped her. And the Lord helped her. The third point I want to stress and finish very fast. Is that her cry was only one plea. And that was to deliver my children from the debtors. Because she knew that once the debtors catch hold of their children, they will make them bonds, they will make them slaves. That is not a pleasing sight for any mother to see. We as parents, we think that our children are very free and we are giving them all the freedom that they require. And if it is a birthday, we give them the best dress, the best cake in the town, and uh, come what may, whatever they ask, we give them. And many a times, we as God's people, we forget to insist them giving them Jesus. We sometimes forget to give them Jesus at the right time when they need it. There was a mother, the gospel worker's wife, we call pastor's wife who was very loyal and faithful, who knew her God very personally, not because of her husband's work. It is because of a personal relationship with, uh, she had with the Lord. And she knew what to be done in times of trouble. So she directly went to the prophet, cried for her children and asked only one thing, the debtors are at the door. Now, Lord, you have to save me. Save my children. Save me and my children from the debtors' hand. This morning as we close this message, Lord, uh, my dear church members, I pray that we as parents, we as grandparents, we as church members, we as elderly people, we ought to spend time to cry for our children. We have to pray, we have to cry, we have to weep, we have to, we, we have to lament of the wickedness that are happening in and around us. 
First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says be sober be watchful your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom to be devoured we do not know where our children are going these days our children have all the gadgets they need in this modern age we still can get contact get disconnected with them we still can lose them we think they are doing good unless you give them Jesus and tell them that we as parents we are praying for you in their seeing you need to pray for them when they have a, uh, when they have a problem when they are in trouble you call them sit with them, sit with you pray for their problem and let them learn that it is their duty to pray to the Lord in times of trouble and let them develop a character and, a, and a, let them have a hobby of going to the Lord when they are in trouble. Many times we sit to watch TV together. We watch matches together. We go out for recreation together. But we forget to sit together and pray. Most of the time we don't pray for our needs. We do our daily routine prayer. Morning and evening prayers we do. We are Christian, we are pious Seventh-day Adventists. We see that we do these two prayers. But when our children require help from the Lord and Lord alone, it is our responsibility as parents to call them. Make them sit with us. Talk to them. Pray with them to the Lord. Cry. Let them see that you are literally weeping for your child. Let them see that you are really concerned about their problems. Let them see that you act to resolve their problems. And your child will not go astray from the precepts that the God has led before them. Your child will not lose sight of the kingdom that is soon coming. Your child will not be taken bondage. Your child will not commit suicide if you cry for your children and for their problems. My dear church members, Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer thee. I will show thee great things and difficult and mysterious things which you do not know. You call unto me. I will make known unto you the mysterious things that you will never know unless I reveal you. If you cry regularly for your children, if you are concerned about your children and their character development and you like to see them in heaven, I assure you that God will reveal things that are happening in their lives in advance to you. They, God will give you dreams. God will give you visions. God will expose everything that they are undergoing and God will tell you where they are and God will tell you what is going to happen to them and God will protect your children from the possible dangers that are at their doorstep. My dear church members this evening as I close I urge I request and I cry to you that you pray for your children. You cry for your children. If you have not done so far, it is an opportunity and I give it as a challenge. Cry and cry. Cry before the Lord for your children that they may be, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is my prayer that every mother, every father, Every parent take time to cry for their children. Jesus said, O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, weep for you and for your children. This evening, if you have a problem, if you are in trouble, if you 
think that it is worth going to the feet of Jesus and seeking his help, it is the time that you come, come to the feet of the Lord and seek, him, seek his blessings. My dear church members, it is high time that we cry and pray for our children. If it is not for us, nobody in this world will cry and pray for our children. As the prophet of the old and, her, and his wife pray for her children, God heard her cry, delivered them, the family, the entire family from the perilous times. So also, faithful God, our Savior, will redeem, deliver, and protect you and your children. And so that we will see our children in the kingdom of heaven with us. And to that end, may God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity that you have extended to me. May God bless you till we see face to face, or else see you all in heaven. God bless you.